The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made. In the net which they hid, their own foot is caught. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me this as we turn to Psalm 9, another psalm of David, as he thinks of the, the process of life for the wicked and for the righteous. He sees a process whereby people forget God, and then they dig a pit for themselves. In the end, they will be judged by God for the things that they have done. But other people who know your name put their trust in God, they walk in righteousness and they will be received by God. And one of the consequences of rejecting God that comes through in this psalm is that when we reject God, we also become uncivil towards fellow men and we oppress the poor. And God is concerned for the poor. Well, let's read together our Psalm 9. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne, judging in righteousness. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. O enemy, destructions are finished forever, and you have destroyed cities, even their memory has perished. But the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness, and he shall administer judgment for the peoples in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble, and those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. When he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me, you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may tell of all your praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made. In the net which they hid, their own foot is caught. The Lord is known by judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Meditation, Selah. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God, For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. And may the Lord bless his word again to us. Well, we need to be wholehearted in our praise of God. If we forget the greatness of God and the work of God, we will slip away and be caught up in the path of the wicked, whereby they will end up being judged by God. You have blotted out their name for ever and ever. Now, this comes through to the New Testament. In the letters that Jesus sent to the churches, he promises the believer that their name shall not be blotted out of the book of life. He says the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. One of the first things that happens when you turn away from God is that you put yourself first before others as well and so you oppress others and God brings judgment on the wicked and the Lord here is a refuge or a secure hiding place for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So when we know the name of the Lord, 
then we know his character, we know his righteousness, we know his power, we know his authority. And when we know who the Lord is, then we are able to put our trust in him because we know that is the secure place to put our trust. And it is secure, for you have not forsaken those who seek you. And the scriptures are full of exhortation for us to seek the Lord. Jesus, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we sing praises to the Lord. That's when we tell others how great God is. And we declare his deeds among the people, not just among the believers, but we need to let unbelievers know how great is our God. And he is the one who avenges blood. He will not forget the cry of the humble. For the lowly cry out to God day and night, and he will not forget their cry. He might be a while before he acts in judgment, but he will act, for he will judge the world in righteousness. A repeated concept in the scriptures is that the wicked dig a pit for themselves. And here he says the nations have sunk down in the pit which they've made, in the net which they hid, their own foot is caught. We get caught up by the consequences of our actions. We think we're doing something smart, but then we get caught out by it. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The Lord has an uncanny way of turning things around so that the person on top is suddenly on the bottom. And there are many proud men who have thought that they have great control, who God brings down because pride goes before a fall. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The consequences of our actions flow through and if our actions are righteous, the consequences of righteousness flow through. And if our actions are wicked, the consequences of our wickedness flow through. That's in this life. The wicked shall be turned into hell, into Sheol, into the place of the grave. And that is all the nations that forget God. Because though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. We have that process described for us by Paul in Romans chapter 1. The process of turning away from God. The little bit of knowledge that you have, you don't make use of. So he says, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So you know God, but you don't glorify him, you don't give him thanks, and so you become greater in your own eyes, and your heart becomes darkened, as God recedes from view. So you, in your darkness, profess to be wise while you become fools. And you replace the glory of the incorruptible God with an image, something that you have made with your own hands, whether birds or beasts or creeping things. Your focus is on the things of your hands. Well, this has consequences in behaviour, uncleanness of behaviour, a debased mind, all kinds of evil flowing through our lives and ultimately condoning evil and speaking against righteousness. That is the slippery path, the consequences of not glorifying God as God. The end of that road is destruction. But the needy will not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. For God hears those who call upon him. So the conclusion of the matter. Arise, O Lord, do not let men prevail. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. The pride of man thinks he is invincible. But David's prayer and the prayer of the righteous is that the proud might be debased. The nations may know themselves to be but men. Let us humble ourselves before God. Remember him, seek him and put our trust in him. Remember to praise him, to give thanks for his name. For everything we are and have comes from him. And when we put God on the throne, then we will care 
for the poor and the needy around us. Around us.